conditions of equilibrium we have discussed this in one of the previous videos and we have mentioned for equilibrium of a body all the forces and moments acting on the body should be zero so what you have here is a system of force having two forces um, f1 and f2 uh, acting on the xy plane you have your x-axis and y-axis here so that's basically an xy plane and you have a force f1 acting at a particular angle to the x-axis and f2 acting as an, at an angle to x-axis so by resolving the forces you know there will be two components for the force f1 and for f2 one parallel to the x-axis and one parallel to the y-axis so when we say summation of all forces should be zero for an equilibrium condition we know there will be two forces or forces in two directions so that further elaborates the equation of a force equilibrium into two that is summation of forces along x-axis should be zero and summation of forces along y-axis should be zero which means all the forces along this axis should be zero and all the forces parallel or along this axis should be zero and also you should have all the moments on the body should be zero for an equilibrium condition let's see an example here you have got three forces acting on the xy plane here you have got your x-axis here and your y-axis here and you have got force f1 acting at 45 degree with x-axis having a magnitude of 15 kilonewton f2 acting at an angle 20 degree well this is minus 20 or 200 degree to the x-axis which is of magnitude 10 kilonewton and a force f3 of 30 kilonewton acting at an angle minus 70 degree with x-axis so when considering uh, angles either you need to um, take angle like this and then check the direction of the forces or simply allocate the full angle from the x-axis which is 180 plus 20 that is 200 degree for f2 and 180 plus 70 that is 250 degree for f3 you can either use that angle or take the corresponding signs for these forces which we will see in a couple of minutes so for f1 you know there will be two components that will be in x and y direction which is a cos and a sine component of this force so horizontal components are always cos theta so you know that from previous problems and vertical component will be sine theta so you have got 45 degree here therefore for f1 the horizontal component will be 15 cos 45 and from previous experience you know the direction of that resultant or the resultant will be like this or oh, sorry the component will be in this direction and this component will be like this so this is positive x and this is positive y so both components of force f1 will be having positive magnitudes so you have f1 cos 45 and f1 sine 45 for x and y components which will be same as 10.6 15 cos, cos 45 and sine 45 are same so you have 10.6 and 10.6 for horizontal and vertical components of the force f1 now if you consider f2 you can see f2 is acting on the third quadrant this is the first quadrant and this is the second quadrant in the axis system and this is the third quadrant so your force f3 is acting in the third quadrant therefore both the components will be having a negative sign so if you consider the component in x direction you have like this and y direction you have a force like this so in both cases this force acts in the negative x direction and this one acts in the negative y direction so both the components of force f2 will be having a negative sign so you can use 20 degree or if you use the complete 200 degree you will automatically get a negative sign because sine 200 and cos 200 are negative values so you will always get a 
a, a, a negative value for that if, if you take the complete angles but if you're taking 20 degree here then you should take you should add a negative sign because the force is acting in the third quadrant so you have horizontal component 10 cos 20 that is minus 9.4 and a vertical component 10 sine 20 that is minus 3.4 and the case will be same for F3 as well because F3 also is acting in the third quadrant here. So the resultant or sorry the components will be in the negative X and in the negative Y directions. So that will be 30 cos 70 for X component that is minus 10.3 and 30 sine 70 for Y component that is again um, minus 28.2. So if you apply the uh, conditions of equilibrium in this, uh, you have summation of forces in x direction should be zero, which give you summation of all forces in x direction should be zero. That gives, uh, for the uh, equilibrium condition, you have a resultant force for an equilibrium. So uh, if you consider the equilibrium of the body, then you should have a resultant force in x direction plus F1 10.6 minus this one minus this one should be zero or the resultant of these forces should be 9.1 kilonewton for an equilibrium case so for the equilibrium summation of all forces should be zero we don't know the, what, what the equilibrium condition will be we know this is not an equilibrium state so for equilibrium we, sh we should have all the forces in x direction should be zero so we take a resultant force in x direction just FRX plus 10.6 minus 9.4 minus 10.3 is equal to zero or resultant force in X direction is 9.1 kilonewton. And if you apply the same case for Y direction, for equilibrium, summation of all forces along Y axis should be zero. We have a resultant force in Y direction plus 10.6 minus 3.4 minus 28.2 equal to zero or from that you have resultant force in y direction is 21 kilonewton. So that gives your components of the resultant. In x direction you have 9.1 and in y direction you have 21 which will be in the uh, first quadrant because you have got both the force. So your, your resultant will be here like this and you have got your x and y axis here so your resultant x force is 9.1 so you have got your resultant x that is from the origin that will be 9.1 and resultant y is 21 so you have your resultant y as 21 here And therefore, your resultant force will be like this here. And this will be the directions because you know both are positive. So that, so that should be in the positive x and positive y directions. And your resultant force will be like this. And to find the angle, you have tan theta is y by x so that is y component divided by x component which is 21 by 9.1 that is 2.31 and theta will be 66.6 .6 degree with x axis so theta here will be 66.6 .6 degree so this resultant force along with these three forces will bring the system into equilibrium so if you have the resultant force acting in this system then <coughs> excuse me your system will be in equilibrium <coughs> so we have defined the conditions of equilibrium and did a problem for finding or defining the equilibrium of a force system.